What's up guys? So today should be pretty easy. I just want to talk about some natural hazards. It's stuff we've already actually talked about. We visited this stuff back in seventh grade. Uh, we talked a little bit about tornadoes and hurricanes. Um, we talked about volcanic eruptions, um, landslides. We have a car getting demolished by a landslide. Um, these are all natural hazards, right? Earthquakes. These are what we term natural hazards. So we need to ask ourselves, can we predict when these hazards will occur? Yes or no, right? And landslides are somewhat easier to predict. They're not, you can't predict them all, but you can predict that they'll at least occur in an area where there's a lot of rainfall and unstable slopes and loose soil and things of that sort. The test will give you different scenarios and see if you have the ability to understand if they were predictable or not. Uh, tornadoes occur, for example, when two fronts of hot and cold air collide. Now that happens all the time, but it, it makes, it causes tornadoes when it occurs on flat ground and uh, this map is pretty telling and it shows where all the tornadoes occur basically per year uh, the darker the darker red is more tor tornadoes so just look at oklahoma oklahoma experiences more tornadoes than anywhere else in this in the uh in the united states so you might want to be asking yourself, why does the map not show any tornadoes occurring in Utah? And the reason is because, go back, you realize that it has to happen on flat areas. Utah's not flat. The Utah's up in the, up in the mountains. Oklahoma is lower in elevation, and it's very flat. So there's no mountains out there. And um, that's why you get so many tornadoes out there. You don't see any up in the north, the northwest out here because it's very mountainous and tornadoes don't have uh, places to build and grow. Now, there are a few exceptions. There was a tornado in 2002 or something like that at the uh, Delta Center for Energy Solutions, uh, wherever the jazz play now. But I mean, it's very, very rare to have a tornado here. Uh, we can predict hurricanes, right? We can predict they will occur in warmer parts of the ocean, and then they uh, usually, no, they always move north uh, uh, through through various uh, wind formations. And they're they're easy to track, right? Because we have satellites, so we can track these these um, these hurricanes rather well. And we, if we know like their trajectory and we can prepare for them and people can get ready for them. And you've seen you've seen this before on the TV. People hearing about a hurricane and evacuating and then, you know, possibly saving their own life by leaving because the hurricane was so bad. So we can predict hurricanes uh, with with at least some certainty and re uh, react to them. Volcanic eruptions are also actually surprisingly pretty predictable. Um, if you have a lot of seismographs around the area, um, especially around an active volcanic area, there's usually a couple of small earthquakes in the area, and then and a, a volcanic eru eruption will follow. And that kind of makes sense because, you know, things are moving down there. So it's going to cause seismic waves, which will we, we feel and call an earthquake. And then, you know, a volcanic eruption occurs after. So we can with some degree predict a volcanic eruption as long as we have the seismic data so just know some of these natural hazards that we will be able to predict accurately and um, with at least some idea with some certainty right tornadoes hurricanes some volcanic eruptions some landslides you know we're not always going to get it right but we have an idea of when they might occur so do you remember the natural hazard that we cannot predict? What was it called? It was called earthquakes. Okay, we can't predict earthquakes. I want you to tell your partner why we can't predict earthquakes.
what was the main reason? Well, the main reason is because the mantle's convection currents move tectonic plates, right? And the motion of the mantle down in the, the convection currents down in the mantle, they're very complicated. And um, the, the crust itself is not homogeneous. The, they're going to be different faults at different angles, and they're going to be slowly moving at different rates relative to one another. It's a very, very complex system. So we, the best we can do is um, say this statement that earthquakes will usually occur near fault lines. Remember that that's more or less all we can do at this point. We can say earthquakes are usually going to occur near a fault line, not all the time, but usually. And you remember this website where you can go and check out all the different earthquakes that occurred recently. So this is just today. Here's some earthquakes along the fault line along here in the uh, Pacific Ocean. Here's the ring of fire all the way around here. And you see, not always, you know, there's, these are the major fault lines. There's some minor fault lines in here. But, you know, sometimes you'll have earthquakes that are not on the fault line. But usually they are, see? So that's the best we can do. And we have to respond in different ways, right? If we can't predict these things, we have to at least engineer a way around it so we don't get destroyed every time one comes around. So one way to do that is to stop building with bricks and stone and clay and adobe. Um, modern structures now are always built with wood or steel if they're larger structures. Um, stone walls just do not stand up well to earthquakes. And this is actually a picture of um, a castle wall in Japan that had crumbled because of an earthquake. And they have tons of earthquakes there. So um, I'll just uh, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.